Good evening and bienvenue to the WFTDA 2019 International Championships live from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I'm Death Nella, joined by October Revolution and producer extraordinaire Kate Silver. We are heading into game six of day two. And what does that all mean? It's the first semi-final. We're finally into that juicy part of the tournament. Actually, this entire event has been phenomenal. Game nine in total of everything. I said game six. What am I talking about? Game nine, Tober. There's been nine games. There's been nine games. Two days. <laughs> I know. It's a lot of roller derby. Actually, 10 games, because there was the game of nations this morning, the Beer Nation game exactly. this morning. Exactly, yes. So lots and lots of roller derby has happened in the last uh, 4, 36-ish hours. A phenomenal game to start day two. I really enjoyed uh, the spirit of derby that was in the building and the energy, and everyone was so thrilled to be here, and it's been a fantastic few days. Of course, this event hosted by Montreal Roller Derby and Women's Flat Track Derby Association. Yeah, so I'm going to talk to you about the game we're about to watch. We're about to watch Gotham Girls Roller Derby All-Stars play the Victorian Roller Derby League All-Stars. Um, Gotham comes in ranked third in the WFTDA. VRDL is ranked second in the WFTDA. And now uh, let's talk about some rosters first. I'm going to read um, VRDL's roster for you. We have number 07, Spinach, number 10, Biceptual, number 11, Sarah Love, number 130, Jesse Henry, number 20, LaRage, number 2806, Danny Darko, number 35, Anna Condher, number 4, Slamazon, number 4000, Anna Paviova, number 46, Steel Thunder, number 6, Kelly Walker, number 66, Lauren Foote, number 83, Curly Burley, number 85, Bianca Sharetta, and number 9, Lethal. And now for Gotham Girls Roller Derby, number 02, Pinky Swears, number 111, Cherry Napalm, number 1680, Daryl, number 17, Fast and Loose, number 1978, Space Invader, number 213, Spork Chop, number 221, Yeti or Not, Here I Come, number 23, Livy Smalls, number 314, Caffeine, number 365, The Smacktivist, number 4, Violet Knockout, Number four one Roxy Dallas, four five double zero Bonita Applebaum. Number five five three Beauty Andy Beast, and number five six Kate Sarah Sarah. Roxy Dallas is your captain for this bout, and we are playing to get into Hydra contention. That is right. The winner of this game is our first finalist. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how we got here. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Gotham Girls Roller Derby beat Montreal 170 to 90 in game six. And uh, yesterday, Victorian Roller Derby League beat Angel City Derby 169 to 88. So that's uh, how we got to this game. But how did we get here in the season? If we're looking at the, um, the postseason so far, the Thin Air Throwdown, which just happened not quite so long ago, um, VRDL beat Gotham for the first time, 161 to 90, but they also played in June, where Gotham won 101 to 85. And a fun fact is that mm -hmm. before those two games this year, these teams hadn't played since 2015. What? Oh that, my goodness! I know that championships final where uh -huh. Rose went on to beat Gotham in the final, the semifinal was this exact game. Whoa. This is the last time they were on the same side of the bracket. Talk about a and, throwback! Uh, and that one, if you remember, Gotham won 143 to 141. Oh my gosh! So you know, you're, so <laughs> I hope you all. Ooh. Have, um, so this blood is going to be cuffs, blood pressure cups on and a glass of something. A relaxing. lot of fun. And there we go, the first whistle, and we start this bout with Sarah Love with the star for Victoria, and Kate Sarah Sarah out with the star for Gotham. Kate Sarah Sarah having an incredible showing in the second half of that game yesterday, really stepping up and shining. But Sarah Love, of course, this is her, uh, well, supposedly her last champs appearance right now with a retirement note, but look at that, picking up lead jammer status. Yeah, Sarah Love is the highest scorer for VRDL, both in their regular season and this year in the postseason. This is a jammer they lean pretty heavily on and will probably miss once she's gone, but she's here right now and she's a lead jammer. And right now, Kate Sarasara getting stuck in the VRDL wall at the back of the pack Pack barely moving into turn one. Sarah Love very much in the same position as Violet Knockout sent to the penalty box. So pack advantage right now to VRDL, except right as I say that, 
we do have a skater headed to the box. That is biceptual. And we have a track cut call on Kate Sarah Sarah. It is a power jam for Sarah Love in this first jam. Oh my goodness! Sarah Love now sent to the penalty box on a track cut. Arguing with the ref on the way there, all the way. It doesn't look like she gets in subordination for it though. She sits down. That's going to release Kate Sarah Sarah, who had a little bit of penalty trouble in the first half yesterday. Um, and yeah, this will be a two minute jam. And with Kate Sarasara comes Violet. Knockout, full pack strength there for Gotham. Kate Sarasara now just trying to weave through those blockers. Does so on her. Toe stops out on her initial. Oh, and a big apex jump from Sarah Love. The crowd is loving it here in Montreal. Remember, Sarah Love is a lap ahead of Kate Sarasara. So she's already scored four points, whereas Kate is just now in scoring contention. That was an interesting first jam there, Tober. Um, I, I appreciate that you mentioned uh, what was going on with the referee communication, because something that you see so often uh, on Twitter is folks mentioning how much of a time kill that is. But there's that uh, apex jump making up for the lost time, I suppose. Yeah, four, uh, four points on the board for Victoria in that jam one for Gotham. We started it out with a two minute jam, so we have 27 minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. And we yeah. have Spinach out there with the star for Victoria, the smacktivist for Gotham. Both of these jammers have been, have had strong showing so far at Champs. The smacktivist, of course, upgraded to regular jammer rotation when Misty Maven went out injured this year, has been a workhorse for Gotham, highest scoring jammer in the postseason, and almost 100% lead percentage yesterday, only missing one jam with a penalty and then one with a no penalty, no lead. Incredible appearance on the track there. Uh, right now, the pack, though, trying to weave through turn two. And the Smacktivist out with lead. What were we just saying? They seem to uh, like 100%. Yeah, if you haven't, <laughs> Although one for one. If you haven't been with Roller Derby a long time, you might not know that the Smacktivist was a skater for Ohio Roller oh, Derby quite okay. a few years ago. Retired, moved, and is now a Gotham Roller Girl. Look at that. Smacktivist through with four points. Spinach still working on her initial star in hand. That Gotham line just proving almost impenetrable. The crowd going wild as Smacktivist collects another four points. They have been incredibly successful with those multi-scoring passes. The line of Livy Smalls and Yeti are not for Gotham, though incredibly difficult. Finally, uh, Spinach able to get out with Star stashed, but that's just the initial pass. Smacktivist now working on trip number three through the pack there. Picks up three more for that effort. And it's Gotham with 12 points, Victoria with four as we get going into this first semi-final of champs. Here in the replay, we're watching the Smacktivist. Uh, I don't even know how to call that. It was like a <laughs> It was both a skating sideways and a hop, but not a jump. Anyway, you get, you get some points for that. Yes, you certainly do. And we have Space Invader jamming for Gotham with Anna Pave you over, looking to find some sort of opening in that pack, but that Gotham wall just proving to be locked down right now. Actually, both of those walls bracing heavy. Oh, there's a lost knee pad, but it's not enough to slow down Anna Pavey over. She's out with lead. Yeah, you know, Victoria basically wrote the book on these braced wall amoeba things that we've been seeing around for the last, I don't know, almost five years now, and they really just are the pinnacle of the sport when it comes to holding a, a jammer back using that strategy. They basically lock the jammer into what you would call the sad place and then kind of almost like a gear, pick them up and deposit them out of bounds just repeatedly. Ah, that's a really great way to describe it, Tober. Especially when you see, oh my goodness. <laughs> but nothing can really prepare you for a knockout from Violet Knockout as we just saw. <laughs> Anna Paviover is still trying to collect her thoughts there on that one. Space Invader, though, having a difficult go. Yesterday, we saw her easily find, well, maybe not easily. She always makes it look easy, but trying to find that room and making that space. And 
seems like VRDL has figured out. <laughs> when it comes Whoa. to not allowing someone to make space, that's mm -hmm. kind of VRDL's, I don't know, joy. Oh my I want to take up all the space and get the, and squeeze the jammer in. Look at this straight up clinic that we're getting on keeping close to your blockers and using your forward momentum here. Yeah, and Viridiel in the front doing a great job of neutralizing Daryl, the offense, until Daryl needs to bridge. So just leaving Space Invaders stuck up in the front. Now, of course, all of that work was for a one-point advantage there. Gotham with, oh no. Oh no, yeah, Gotham picked up one point on oh. Victoria. It was four to three. So look at that, able to still come out with yeah. the win on that jam. Score is 16 for Gotham, seven for Victoria. Cherry Napalm uh, for Gotham is sitting in the penalty box. So it'll be pack advantage to VRDL to start this one. And the pack starting at the pivot line with Sarah Love and Kate Sarah Sarah getting some momentum this time into it. And it's Sarah Love out first from turn one. A quick little hop around there instead of jumping the apex this time. A little twirl, if you will, Kate Sarasara being recycled back right as Sarah Love is coming in into scoring position. And look at that. Kate Sarasara actually able to do some defense there for getting out on her initial. Kate Sarasara, of course, the second highest scoring jammer, both in the regular season and in the postseason, didn't have a game like that yesterday, but that doesn't mean she doesn't want to have a game like that today. Ooh, Here in the replay. That. Yeah, that's... That's the little hop we were talking about, yeah. right on the toe stops, it seems, but also just perfect knowing exactly where her body needs to be to maintain... Uh, her composure, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, almost like being able to absorb the blocks and use them to increase her momentum forward mm -hmm. through the pack, as opposed to knocking her off of her track through the pack. Anyway. And now we're into Jam 5, this Mactivist up against Spinach for VRDL. The pack really staying close to one another. Lots of spills there out on turn one. And it is Daryl who's doing a lot of that heavy lifting. Hard to sometimes see because she's so effective at just finding her way and cutting through the pack right as needed. It is now a bit of a grind, the entire pack. Oh, and as I say that, the Smacktivist able to find a way, picking up lead. Yep, Smacktivist two for two, lead so far in this game, 11 points total on the board. The action now into turn two. Things are nice and slow. Very calculated where those speed ups are happening right now. Uh, Gotham with a three wall in the back. Victorian with a four wall having to hold back the Smacktivist. It's a lot of energy and resources to put on one skater, but <laughs> when you are that strong a jammer, you're going to need it. I mean, the Smacktivist has been the only skater so far for Gotham who's been able to get lead. So, I and reliably gets lead for Gotham, no matter who they're playing. So, of course, VRDL, in their strategy, must have said, how do we neutralize Smack to us? Uh, haven't been able to stop them from getting lead so far, but we are seeing they're slowing them down a lot more so than, like, Montreal did yesterday. My goodness, Biceptual and Slamazon having to do a lot of work there, plus Danny Darko for VRDL. It has just been a grind, this jam. We're 12 seconds left. Seems this really will be a game of inches, a game of <laughs> a few feet. We'll see how things end up for this jam. Well, these teams are just so very different mm -hmm. uh, in how they play, right? VRDL plays a very disciplined, very formulated game. There's, You can't see, but on their bench, they have hand signals going the entirety of a jam. They, their bench is telling them how to block, how to change, how to jam, what to do. They're all kind of in sync and together in, you know, in ex executing a plan. Whereas I feel like Gotham is just a very adaptive team. You never know what game you're going to get when they play because they're adapting to every team they're playing mm -hmm. um, in a way that not a lot of teams can do. Right, so it's just interesting to watch these two teams play each other because of that. And now we're going to see two jammers making their debut for this bout anyhow. Curly Burley with the star for VRDL and Beauty Andy Beast. Oh my goodness, Curly Burley sent to the penalty box. So it is a power jam situation for Beauty Andy Beast. No lead has been assessed yet. We'll see where this lands. 
Beauty and the Beast, of course, getting the chance to jam more with the absence of Misty Maven as well, but it's been a great addition to the Gotham Ooh. jamming rotation. Lead jammer now. So this is the first lead jam Gotham's had that the Smacktivist didn't pick up for them. Look at that. Yes, Lorage trying to provide some great one-on-one -on -one, uh, blocking there for VRDL, but it's just not enough. And already, Beauty and the Beast coming into scoring position as Curly Burley is released from the penalty box. Speeding up trying now to work those seams of the Gotham line. Curly Burley is an interesting jammer for VRDL, a different kind of jammer than the rest of their jamming core. More physical, an aged up junior, uh, and super fun to watch. Always great to see those aged up juniors coming in with all of that derby knowledge and experience at such a young age too. Beauty Andy Beast coming back for the second scoring pass as Curly Burley still trying to make their way through that initial. Beauty Andy Beast now coming up against the last remaining VRDL blocker, Lauren Foote, able to get by, but my goodness, Curly Burley not giving her an inch on the track there, calling it off. That was a big one for Gotham. Yes, yeah, exactly what I was talking about. Curly Burley, more physical, engages in jammer and jammer blocking and forces that call off with a little more oomph than I'm behind you. As, as you should, Here you got to commit. You yeah. got to commit. Here, Here in the replay, we're going to see using that momentum of the block to get around. I, it's beautiful when a jammer can do that because now you're actually picking up speed from the hit. Mm, exactly. If you can put your hips where you want your body to be so that the hit literally propels you in the direction you want to go. Heading into jam seven here, we have Sarah Love up against Kate Sarasara. We've been seeing that matchup quite a bit. We do have a high block penalty assessed to uh, Slamazon for VRDL. Once again, pack advantage to Gotham in this situation. No lead has been asset yet, assessed yet, and the pack is stationed between turns one and two, Tober. That's the uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the friendly spot. Yeah, yeah, the friendly spot there. And Kate Sarasara is getting a track cut call. I was just about to say getting lead assessed. So she is now on her way to the penalty box. This is the second penalty for Kate Sarasara. Both, I believe, are being track cuts. Um, it's been a tough one, and right as we say that, Sarah Love picks up lead. We have a minute left in this jam. You know, I don't want to talk about penalties quite yet, but we're in jam seven, and both teams have seven penalties apiece, so almost a penalty per jam average. It's it's not low. We'll sort it that way. Yeah, especially if it continues at that pace, <laughs> yeah. of course. Sarah Love now working on that scoring pass, but getting the bump out from Violet Knockout, who has just been tremendous with the drag backs. And we have a direction of play call assessed to Slamazon. That will be her second of the bout. So this is the, um, at the end of this power jam, we can, uh, for Gotham, we'll just know that there's been two power jams apiece, so two jammer penalties each team. And of course, Gotham with quite an advantage points-wise right now, 28 to Victoria's nine in total, the start of this jam. Violet knockout headed to the penalty box. I didn't see the call. Oh, and a big hit by number eight, five. That's Bianca Sharetta of VRDL. So where does that land, everyone? Well, Victoria finally in the double digits there at 13. Gotham stays 28. This is going to be a very, perhaps, low-scoring first half. But hey, the night is young here. We have another look at that moment when Sarah Love with the knockout there, or rather, Violet knockout with the knockout on Sarah Love. Experience world-class edging with the number one wheel in Derby, Radar Halo. Check out Radar Halo, part of the Rydell family. We have Spinach on the line for Victorian. Space Invader wearing the star, Jam 8 of the first half. And we are seeing those formations again, Tober. This is probably the fastest 15 minutes of roller derby this weekend, if not ever in my entire life of roller derby. It's just been going, going, going. Quick, quick, quick. And there we have VRDL assessed lead. That's spinach as 
Lorray uh, just sent to the penalty box. So we're still seeing a bit of a sp penalty spiral for VRDL. They only have two blockers out on the line, oh, although... So to Gotham. <laughs> Gotham has three right oh, now. Anyway, sorry, I counted wrong. That's okay. That's <laughs> still less than they should have out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very small pack. It's a small party of intimate friends. And we have seen the penalty troubles hurting teams all weekend, like actually hurting teams, even the very, very good ones. That was a great, in the replay, we just saw some beautiful blocking by Gotham and um, the lead being picked up by Victoria. The score right now is 15 for Victoria, 28. For Gotham, we have 13.30 left in this game. Smacktivist yeah. with the star for Gotham up against Anna Pavey over. And remember, we are not at full strength, right? As I say that, Livy Smalls, the pivot for Gotham out on the track. But no need to worry about that because the Smacktivist is holding you down. Picks up lead jammer status. VRDL now having their blockers released. Anna Pavey over is out and ready to score some points. Will she be able to collect some before the Smacktivist notices? Oh my goodness, Smacktivist was sent to the penalty box. It happened so quickly and then released. So there must have been a mistake because she still has, they still have lead jammer status. But now there's a track cut. Lots of confusion happening. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I, I'm, I think they were lead and now not lead and we have two minute jam. Okay, so I do believe there, there was some confusion on that first penalty call, but then the Smacktivist, upon release, incurred that track cut, and hence why they are now seated in the penalty box. So Anna Pavey over, coming back to collect some more points for v VRDL, and it's already been a 12-point jam. The Smacktivist now released from the penalty box. It's the largest jam we've seen in the game so far. Now a one-point game on the board. It looks like both teams are, uh, when both teams are at full strength like this, everybody stops skating. So it's those smaller packs when you really start seeing the jammers being able to get out and get around. But when everybody's there, we're just kind of grind to a halt. And speaking of grinding to a halt, both of these blocking groups just settling in and down, although the Smacktiv is able to work around LaRage, picks up four points. And we have a big hit there on Anna Pavey over. Official Ninja Sassim just checking to make sure everything's okay. The jam was not called for the penalty. Score 32 now to 31, 11 15 left in the half. It's a one point game. 16 points for Victoria on that gem. The largest gem we've seen so far in this game. And of course, that was a power gem for Victoria. On the replay here, we're going to see Anna Paviova making a way, paving her own <laughs> way. Uh, there's a timeout now being called by a Victorian Roller Derby. It's a good time to remind you that this floor was laid up with the help from a gaff gun. Get your teams today at gaffgun.com. Here's the Smacktivist. Taking an apex jump, not able to make it. Oh. Headed to the penalty box. Is this, was that possibly the first? Oh, no, they're sent, yeah. That was the first one. That was an error. Oh, and that's the second one. See, they come in. At those two VRDL skaters were skating backwards, yes. and the Smacktivist came in thinking they were behind them, but were not. It's okay, Smacktivist. We, <laughs> we can understand where yeah. that confusion comes in. If only you could see in slow-mo. If only you could, yeah, just see all yeah. around you as you're skating on the track. It, could you imagine if you had 360 slow-mo vision, what a good amazing. jammer you'd be? Amazing. <laughs> You beat the best jammer uh, ever. Yes, indeed. Well, and a lot of these jammers seem to have that ability, even though they might not actually have that ability. <laughs> and right as we say that, we start Jam 10, and it's Kate Sarasara matched up with Sarah Love for VRDL. This has been an exciting matchup, and this one goes to Kate Sarasara quite quickly, too, as Biceptual is sent to the penalty box for VRDL. VRDL has not been able to really have a full strength 
for a while. Kate Sarasara with a big apex jump, picks up four points and calls it off. This is the first lead for Kate Sarasara in this half and in this game. And she struggled a little bit yesterday, seems to be getting her feet underneath her today, although she had those two jammer penalties. But that was a beautiful textbook jam. And we're watching it in the replay. Calling off that jam, spinning around. Getting a high five. 36 now, 31. Gotham in the lead. We've got 10 minutes left in the half. Action going again. And this line, this blocking line of Roxy Dallas, Violet Knockout, Daryl, my goodness, it has not been easy. And we're going to see Lauren Foot out, yes, for the first time this bout. Trying to see if perhaps her jamming style is a bit better, but it is the Smacktivist once again. No. Oh, not, not with lead. lead, though. Out in front with a no-earned pass. You know, both these teams have really been playing around a lot with these jammer matchups, looking to see what works, where they can get consistent lead. Um, even the Smacktivist, whom we see get lead consistently, is now having a little bit of trouble doing that. Both teams kind of feeling each other out, and you can tell that from their, um, their results, having played each other twice this year, being so vastly different that... They're still trying to get a read on each other. And Jesse Henry there doing a lot of work at the back of the pack for VLD, VRDL, holding back the Smacktivists, bringing them back, drawing them back rather. Violet knockout now sent to the penalty box. We are going to talk about those penalties at the end of this jam because it is not a pretty picture right now, especially for VRDL. There's two skaters already with four apiece. Um, and we have eight and a half minutes left in the second j In the first half, In the yeah. first half, rather. Right now, the pack almost at a standstill. Like I said, almost a game of inches because everyone's moving so slowly, that grind-out derby style. This is the game they seem to want to play in the second half. And oh my goodness, a forearm call on Lauren Foote will allow the Smacktivist a power jam and it will run the full two minutes three apiece now on power jams so nobody uh running up the power jams compared to the other i would say that we're seeing a lot of penalties overall uh i think this is because it's a physical game because there's a mm -hmm. lot of pushing and jockeying we're seeing some directions of plays illegal contacts uh multiplayer blocks like you see in this scrummy game that vrdl likes to play and gotham is playing with them and, so uh, my question yeah. to you, Tober, is who's playing whose game right now? I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> huh, because I'm trying to figure I mean, that one out, too. I would say that Gotham is messing up VRDL's game a lot more than VRDL would like because Ooh. they can't have those beautiful tripods if, they're if their players aren't on the track. And that's where VRDL has always been a little bit vulnerable, even mm -hmm. back to you know 2016, 2017, when you saw them. If you could get their players in the box, you could really kind of get an edge on them. They weren't unbeatable. And I think that's true here, too. The only problem is Gotham's also going to the box at that rate. And so they aren't able to really put distance in the score. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, nine points difference right now as we head into the final seven minutes of the first half. Gotham 40, Victoria 31. Jam number 12, Kate Sarasara with lead. Coming up to pick up some points while Lauren Foote has been released from the penalty box and is now working on her initial. Benita Applebaum sent to the penalty box there for Gotham. We're seeing a lot of illegal contact calls this weekend as those players go all the way to the front of the pack, continuing to engage until that last moment. Yeah, that one-on-one -on -one blocking, though, it does mm -hmm. buy you some time. It gives your blocker some time to release your jammer. Um, it's, a, it's a moment where you're not entirely 100%. Uh, like, you know, you can play offense because you know where the jammer is, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be playing a ton of offense as the jammer is speeding around, and then you can't turn back to defense. But in the moment when you've got somebody 10 feet out in front of you, it, it's extra time, basically. And we just saw a look there, Kate Sarasara's very smooth work on the inside line, on the outside line. And here we see the inside line worked by Spinach for Jam 13, picking up lead for Victoria. It is such a close game at this time. Space Invader with the star, but getting stuck in that VRDL wall as VRDL is, is at full strength on the track. 
This is the first lead in four for VRDL, so they've been struggling for a little bit, but not anymore. Big thanks to producer Kate Silver for bringing us all of that information. Spinach now trying to come up against the Gotham Wall at the back of the pack. Manages to get through. The crowd is loving it. It is once again a full house here in Montreal. Meanwhile, Space Invaders still having a hard time getting through on this initial pass. And this is not typically what we see from Space Invader. Didn't really see this last night, Tober. Yeah, but I think that um, one of the good things about having a deep jammer bench uh, oh. is that if somebody's having a bad night, somebody else is having a good night. This is a cut penalty being called to spinach. on spinach. This will be a uh, power jam for Gotham. It's the fourth power jam that Gotham has had the pleasure of enjoying. And there's still 40 seconds left in this jam, but Space Invader still has not completed her initial pass. So I guess lead perhaps is still available? I don't know why I'm asking know. that as a question. As we're talking, uh, Spinach is now standing in the penalty box. Oh my goodness, this defense is otherworldly at the moment. We have Danny Darko constantly getting in the way. Spinach already out of the penalty box. Now coming up on a strong Gotham wall. Where did that jam land us here? Victoria now only two points behind Gotham. It's yeah. 44 Gotham, 42 VRDL. It was an 11-point jam for Victoria. We're just under four minutes in the half. And uh, durable, functional, stable, the S1 Pro knee pads are built for roller derby. And enjoy this replay you're watching. Yeah, this is the sad place. This is the slow-mo sad place. And Gotham was sending in offense. That's, that just shows you how tough a game this is. Curly Burley with the star for, Goth uh, for VRDL, rather. Beauty Andy Beast out for Gotham. The pack barely moving out of the straightaway. It's pretty much a wall I would not want to come, <laughs> come up against. A swarm. A there swarm, it is. yes. When I'm talking about VRDL, mm -hmm. grabbing that jammer, depositing her out of bounds. It's, yep. You're seeing it in full effect with Slamazon and Bianca Sharetta holding down those butts at the end. And it is, they are using all four of their blockers to, to do the defense as Curly Burley is left to handle their own journey on this jam at the front. So will the pack split? Is that how we're going to do this? Well, we have a bridge in the middle, and mm. Gotham doesn't have the luxury of being able to use all four of their blockers in the front because that that bridge was important. But then when VRDL sent up the offense, they ended the need of the bridge, although they for oh, Gotham forgetting to reinstitute the bridge when the offense left is what allowed Curly Burley to get a lead. Yes, we could uh, talk all day about when and how to send a bridge. <laughs> but in this game, I... It's just such a grind-out effort. It's been tremendous to watch this return of defensive play derby. Curly Burley with lead now working their way through their first scoring trip through the pack. But it will be number two, three, Livy Smalls with the drag back there in turn two. That's how little this pack has moved since the start <laughs> yeah. of, the, of the jam. Back in the day when the uh, Ringster used to track track laps, laps mm -hmm. for the, yeah, they would be like 0.5. Yes. <laughs> and there we see Beauty Andy B star in hand, finally out of the pack with one second left on the jam clock. And I'll wait for here. Yep, we have a lead change. It's now 45, Victoria, 44 for wow. Gotham. 130 in the half. Official review being called by Victoria here in the replay. We're going to watch Beauty and the Beast. That is, so oh. Victoria makes it really attractive to go towards the line, right? Yes. You think you're going to get through. And then they use that moment to trap and bop you out. Um, Viridiel hasn't had lead since Jam 1 before the, they had two in a row there, though, right? Ah, oh, we're just finding out oh, some yeah. interesting stats. It does appear that there has been an official review called by VRDL. There is a minute and a half, well, a minute and 31 seconds, if you want to be precise, left on the game clock for this first half. 
What a thrilling semifinal. That's right. The winner of this game is in for Hydra contention in tomorrow's final. And the defeated player will get to Ninja Assassin. VRDL is requesting a head block penalty on the Gotham Jammer. Okay. And we're really grateful to the fantastic broadcast team here, making sure that we can hear our officials. And we should probably talk about our officials too. Yes, we will talk about our officials. Let's hear who they are. We have Ninja Sassum, Darth Bling, Killer Bite, Gym Class Hero, Doesn't Matter, MC Ninja, Dura Conch, Jens Hotker. And then for our non-skating officials, we have Princess Bitch, Pussy Panzerfaust, Bert Hurt, Cluster Smuck, Chemical Res Restraint, Don King Kong, Toxic Marcotic, Extra Crispy, Ziggy Scardust, Beth Case Scenario, and Rhodes Warrior. And I'd like to take a second to remind you to check out derbywithoutborders.org to see how you can help support the growth of roller derby around the world. Hopefully you got to see that amazing game this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, this game is grinding. It is long. We've had four two-minute jams so far. We're only 14 jams in, and there's a minute and a half left in this half. Uh, that's long. And we're going to hear from the alt official in just a moment, although we may also hear from Ninja Sassim on the feed. What's incredible, though, about this crowd, Tober, is everyone is so hyper-focused. There is those high moments of the, of the applause and the cheers, and now, right now, this kind of intensity as uh, the skaters hear what the decision is. Wait, 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 sorry, I forgot. Not you. And we will oh, hear from Ninja Sassim. <laughs> As a result of the review, the no call stands. VRDL will not retain. And there you have it. A minute 31 left on the game clock. We're going to see the matchup of Sarah Love, usually matched up against Kate Sarasara, but Gotham sending out the Smacktivist. Now, the Smacktivist is one of their most reliable jammers. Both teams, I mean, I don't know. This is I. This is not a game where you want to be a jammer. <laughs> There's some games where it's like real fun to jam. This is not one of those games. <laughs> That's a yep. yep. I'm only laughing from a relatability standpoint. Lead Sarah goes, Love, uh, yes, with the lead right up, right like a half lap behind is the Smacktivist. Sarah Love now coming up on a scoring trip through the pack, and VRDL able to do a very successful sweep. To, uh, to clear the inside lane there. Yeah, I think Gotham thought maybe if they could outrun it or, or waste some time, they'd be able to force the call off. But in doing that, they weren't able to put together uh, a defense in time for Star Love not to score those four points. There, here you see Violet Knockout trying so hard to close the door for Sarah Love, but not quite, just not enough. Just able to get by. Victoria, 49, Gotham, 44. We have 32 seconds left on the game clock. Kate Sarah Sarah got, uh, jamming for Gotham. Anna pave you over in white and blue for VRDL. And Kate Sarah Sarah sent to the penalty box on a cap, uh, tra track cut. Sorry. Third in the game for Kate Sarah Sarah, just having some trouble staying on the track. Yeah, all three jammer penalties, of, of course, being track cuts. Yeah, it's unlike her. She's just really kind of not playing like you normally see her play. Normally she's the jammer you're talking about in a very different context than this. So interesting to see how, you know, when we get in the locker room, that adjusts. Meanwhile, Anna Pave you over, getting recycled, having to work through a little bit of incidental contact there with one of the officials. Everything seems to be okay. Kate Sarah Sarah released from the penalty box, coming in quickly, trying to capitalize on some sort of distraction. The pack stopped in front of a big crowd there on turn three. Yeah, and like I was saying, you know, Kate normally has a 15% penalty rate in the postseason or in this postseason. Uh, that rate's been higher in this game. She's had three and out of the five jams she's jammed so far. And here we see Kate Sarah Sarah with a massive Apex jump, able to now secure that initial pass and force the call off. Gotham doing a phenomenal job of not allowing any VRDL offense. That's a fantastic help. penalty kill we just saw. Only four points mm -hmm. for Victoria on that jam. Score going into the half is going to be 53 to 44 oh, here in the replay. Wow. Looking, that's not an Apex jump, <laughs> that's just flying. 
<laughs> like, when does jumping become flying? I, I you could put like that's just and, flying. And again, and look oh, at look the at awareness and the precision. So we we talk about a jammer who has seen three track cut penalties right in the yeah. first half. Now just showing us exactly uh, where you know you should land. Yeah, be safely in bounds. This has been a I'm grinding <laughs> first half. We've only seen, I think, 16 jams. Incredible. Uh, yeah. I, what do you think these teams are going to do in the locker room? Oh, for sure, for sure. Kate Sarasara likely going to ha hopefully have a bit of a mental reset, right? Let that first half go. If she can pick up steam, Gotham is going to be a lot more of a powerhouse. And then for VRDL, uh, I would say making sure that you stay out of the penalty box. You need all four. Every time they have all four blockers out there, they have been yeah. unstoppable. They've won those jams. I agree. You know, we're looking, if you're going to look at the penalty count, I believe it's 18 for Gotham, 16 for Victorian. Both teams teams really needing to lock that down and like I said it's a much different game towards the end of the second half we were mm -hmm. seeing what happens when everybody's on the track and it was slow and molasses -y and hard and that's kind of I think what these where these teams like to play uh, is kind of in that defense zone so we're going to take a look now on screen at those penalties, but also we're going to take a break during this halftime, and we would like to hear from you. Tell us what your thoughts are, what you're looking forward to in the second half at hashtag talk to WFTDA on Twitter. I'm Death Nella, joined by October Revolution and our fantastic producer, Kate Silver. We'll be back with more action from the 2019 International WFTDA Championships live from Montreal. Hello and welcome back to the 2019 International WFTDA Championships live from Montreal, Quebec, brought to you by the Montreal Do Roller Derby and the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. I'm Death Nella, joined by October Revolution and producer Kate Silver, and we have lots of numbers for you after a phenomenally close first half. That's right. We are into the second half very soon of Gotham versus Victorian Roller Derby. This is the first semifinal of these championships. So a lot on the line here. Gotham trailing, but only by a little bit right now, 44 to 53. Tober, let us know what is happening. <laughs> um, You've had a little bit of time to assess. Yes, so the, the answer here is, is mm -hmm. we look, okay, so Kay Silver and I, during the break, did a little <laughs> bit of math and we looked at some history. So if you remember, in June, there was uh, Georgia W. Tush, and at that, at that tournament, Gotham beat VRDL 101 to 85. At the half of that game, mm -hmm. we were looking at 56 for Gotham and 26 for VRDL. Oh. Now, if you're looking at Thin Air Throwdown, which happened in September, mm -hmm. uh, VRDL beat Gotham in that game 161 to 90. The half of that game was 89 for v VRDL and 56 for Gotham. So about a 30-point huh. difference at both games. Interesting. Uh, that was just a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing because this game <laughs> is a nine point differential at the half. Nine. Uh, and I think that the story here really is, number one, both teams are changing the jammer lineup a lot. We're not seeing a lot of the mm -hmm. same jammers facing each other over and over and over again. They're trying to figure out what's gonna work and who, what matchups are gonna work. Mm -hmm. And then also what jammers are gonna be able to play which lines. Also the penalty situation is definitely something that Yes. Doesn't seem typical to me. I mean, I don't have penalty counts from every game we've ever played. But we're looking at 18 penalties for Gotham in that half and 16 penalties for Victorian in that half. And that's a lot of penalties um, when you have a team that plays in formation, which both these teams like to do. So and the answer to your question is I have no <laughs> idea what's going to happen. This and is literally the cliche, it's anyone's game in game form. It really is. So starting this second half, Kate Sarasara with the star, star for Gotham. Sarah Love for VRDL. Actually, the exact same matchup that started this bout. Yep. Oh, and a big spill there as Sarah Love gets tripped up on Daryl from Gotham. That's in turn one. This really is the blockers game, I do believe. So perhaps in the second half, it'll become more the jammers game. So Kate Sarasara actually has an 83% lead percentage, including this jam, but has three jammer penalties in the first half, so wasn't able to capitalize and had a negative differential coming into this half. Uh, no longer, oh no, still does a little bit, but you know, that was three points on the board. She just put up 47 now to 53. And uh, yeah. And here we take another look at how Kate Sarasara got out on the outside line. Phenomenal offense provided there by Daryl. And we 
do need to give some major love to all the blocking that's taking place. It's all happening in such close quarters. It's hard sometimes to catch the numbers, but just know that these lines have been I, I certainly wouldn't want to be out there facing them. Well, these are both teams where if you say, who's the best blocker on this team? The answer is, I don't know all of them. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't know all of them. My goodness, Anna Paviova is able to get by on toe stops, getting around a Yeti or not, here I come. Now, oh, oh. staying in on that scoring pass, but then getting bumped out by uh, natural momentum there. That was coming up against Livy Smalls for Gotham. Anna Paviova is now working on that scoring trip through the pack. Still has lead, picked up four points there. Meanwhile, the Smacktivist with a star <laughs> and a little competitive shoving there on a route to that scoring trip, but gets shut out on jam two. This time four for Victoria, 57 to 47 now. It's a 10 point game and uh, time to say, when you need to roll quick, then think quick. Quick bearings where precision meets performance. Part of the Rydell family. Wow, look at how Pavey stays in bounds there, able to <laughs> do some twirling work, but yes, Yeti unable to fully connect all the way to the line. That's a difficult one. Kate Sarasara with the star for Gotham on jam three, but it is Spinach who's out quick and securing a lead jammer status. Kate Sarasara now a half lap behind. Things moving really quickly. VRDL hoping to uh, capitalize on some offense there as a team. We talked about their strength as a four wall on defense, and we just saw some effective work as a four line on O as well. Yeah, VRDL seems to be picking up the speed when they have their jammer out, but only have about a half of a quarter of a pack, I mean, a track advantage on that jammer. They'll speed it up. They know their jammer can catch up, and also that Ooh. Gotham has a harder time getting their defense together at speed. And now we see, uh, Tober, you were talking earlier about different matchups that we're going to see. Now it's Sarah Love matched up against Space Invader for Gotham. Space Invader having a, a bit of a, a harder time in the first half of this game, trying to, trying to create the space she's so known for. Yeah, Space Invader did a, had a really good game last night, not so much of a good game tonight. And I uh, just trying hard to get through that VRDL braced two wall. Meanwhile, Sarah Love coming up against a very difficult Gotham wall. Benita Applebaum holding things down in the back of that wall. Oh my goodness, who is where at this point? Yeah, it's got, it got a little scrummy in the Fox straight away. And this is what we've been seeing all weekend. Blockers making phenomenal use of their opposing blockers to form a wall but of course that does impede any attempt at offense and here the pack is now at a grind in between turns two and three it looks like vrdl trying to create some more space as blockers are now being bowled over one another it's space invader oh my goodness almost gets by bisexual unable to and we're back where we all began just on the op opposite side of the track now at a grind in between turns two and three and four rather it's been now a minute 30. we still and don't have a lead jammer and we're uh, back to where we started almost at the jammer wow. line wow and sarah love trying to push down bear down on those blockers and it's just not going anywhere, Benita Applebaum. Just, okay, cool. Yeah. You keep pushing, you keep pushing. What a jam. This is the first jam where there hasn't been a lead. And wow. uh, there hasn't been a lead because nobody got out, not because somebody went to the box or everybody went to the box. Or yeah, nothing I, like that. Here in this replay. I mean, when you talk about a grinding defensive game, there's no indicator more than a jam like this. No, no doubt about that. We're seeing Space Invader, who is always able to create room and find a path, just unable to against that VRDL line. And heading into jam five of the second half, the Smacktivist 
up against Anna Paviova. Viridiel clearly liked this matchup last time. Anna Paviova able to get lead and also uh, had plus 12 points the first time this matchup happened and plus seven points the second time this matchup happened. So Viridiel found, found something that they think is working for them. And in this case, it's Gotham who's found something that's worked for them as Pavey is drawn back, now digging in the toe stops. Sent back to the outside there in turn two, drawn back. Once again, the Smacktivist facing this, a similar VRDL structure as Space Invader was just dealing with in the previous jam. Deal doing such a good job of making it hard to play offense against them because if you go in to break up their their walls, their braced walls, you actually just get in your own jammer's way. Exactly. And we do have a two blocker penalties rather for VRDL and that will allow, oh my gosh, three blockers now in the penalty box for VRDL. Oh my goodness. So Smacktivist coming up against just one blocker <laughs> and yeah, then the jammer. The jammer doesn't have the helmet cover on though, so don't be fooled and think there's two blockers in the pack. There is one. And one lonely. One is the loneliest number. Yes, and <laughs> a strategic time to call off that jam, giving yourself the pack advantage tremendously. As we head into jam six, oh my goodness. 22 minutes and 30 seconds left on the game clock. Plenty of derby. And here we have another look at the Smacktivist coming up against LaRage, Danny, Darko. And as we enter Jam 6, it's Kate Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Love. We've seen this matchup. Kate Sarah, Sarah getting by and sending the VRDL pivot now to the penalty box. Whoa, this is a spiral if I've ever seen one. Sarah Love able to get out on her initial pass. The pack speeding up, although there's hardly a pack. Kate Sarah, Sarah told to keep running it, although the pack is speeding up. Violet knockout for Gotham is released. An attempted apex jump in turn three by Sarah Love. Doesn't quite land, has to be drawn back. Will the pack get up to full strength before the end of this jam, Tober? Uh, that might be the indication here. Maybe that's what Gotham wants to do because you don't want to start another jam so far down, risk not getting lead, and then you're not in control. Ooh. You're still scoring here. Oh my goodness, especially when you're able to apex jump in such a timely, easy breezy manner as Kate Sarasara just did and feeling really good about that effort. This is the Kate Sarasara we're used to seeing. That's a jam that I expect to see from her. 12 points on the board brings the score to 64 to 63. Just under 21 minutes left and that's in, in the game. Yeah, that's in favor of VRDL. So Gotham just one point behind. Oh, wow. There's another look at Kate Sarasara able to stay in bounds there. Collect those points. 19 to 11 since the beginning of this half. That 19, of course, being Gotham, the 11 mm -hmm. being Victoria. It was a nine-point game coming in from the half, and now it is a one-point game. So Gotham to gain eight on the differential. And don't forget, you can lay your track in less than 20 minutes with the assistance from Gafgun. Visit gafgun.com today to learn more. That's with two Fs. And we're hearing from you at hashtag talk to WFTDA. Katarina Hitt saying, I would like to buy all the Gotham and VRDL jammers snacks after this absolute grind. Oh, I'm sure they're going to need probably a buffet after this one. It's been so much work, but once again, blockers, the unsung heroes, right? In this grind out derby where they're drilling down, staying put, not budging. And that's where you're seeing, we have 20 minutes well, a little under 21 minutes left to go, and the score is 64-63 in favor of VRDL. Superfit Hero apparel designed for roller derby, tough enough for any workout. Sign up now for Black Friday deals at superfithero.com. And if you're looking for Black Friday shopping, don't you can also check out RollerCon.com because mm. the top placing teams will receive MVP passes to RollerCon 2020, July 15th to 19th, and you can get your tickets starting November 29th, so that same weekend. You're listening to Death Nella, October Revolution, and we're produced by Kate Silver. We're so glad you're joining us here on the live stream. Tell your friends. Let them know there's still so much derby to go. Up next is the second semifinal against arch rival 
and Rose City. Oh, that's going to be another good my. game. That is right. That will be the final game of today. And then we'll get into all the action tomorrow, which, of course, is when we will determine who is the champion. And to get us started into jam number seven of the second half, it'll be Anna Paviova for VRDL. And the Smacktivist with the star for Gotham. In the second half already, Victoria Roller Derby has, Victorian Roller Derby League has picked up six penalties to Gotham's three, so double the penalties of Gotham so far in this half. And Danny Darko in a bit of penalty trouble there for VRDL. We'll get to that in just a moment as the Smacktivist already picked up lead, already coming back to score some points. As the pack, it's a messy pack. It's scattered. It's moving fast now. Gotham deciding they're going to set the pace with Caffeine and... Uh, Oh, Cherry Napalm there with Daryl on the line. Yes, lots of speed. These jammers hardly able to catch up. VRDL not sure what's going on. The pack is super split. There is a VRDL blocker up mm -hmm. in the front keeping the pack together. Exactly. Looks like everyone's back inside the engagement zone as the jammers engage. Wow. And the Smacktivist able to capitalize on that speed. This is Gotham's jam for sure. That pace being set by the blockers. There are, or there is rather, I believe, one seated blocker in the box for Gotham. So pack advantage to VRDL now, slowing down into turn one. 44 seconds left in the jam. The Smacktivist with control, deciding to continue to run. We have that official lead change, Gotham taking over in this jam. Things are settling in once more. We saw the speed, now the grind. And I'm, just, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. I'm, I'm watching baited breath a little bit here. too much. I know I have yeah. baited breath to see. Oh, I, that is a star pass up at the front. There's a new jammer. It's Lauren Foot for, for VRDL. VRDL. Yeah, and then force the call at the crowd going. Absolutely wild there, nice and loud and proud. It's a lead change. Gotham hasn't had lead since Jam 13 of period one. They are now up by three, 10 to six in that jam. 18.30 left in the game. Here in the replay, you're gonna see the Smacktivist. Wow. Making some space, knocking the people over, getting the points. Yeah, getting by Lauren Foot there who ended up taking the star. And Gotham actually had four points. There was one additional point assessed before this jam started. Beauty Andy Bees with the star for Gotham. Spinach on the line for VRDL. We have number one seven going to the penalty box. That's fast and loose along with biceptual. So it's three walls a piece now. Penalties Gotham. have evened up a little bit. Six now for Gotham, seven for Victoria. Spin in a half. Spinach at the back of the pack while Beauty Andy Beast is trying to find some kind of space towards the front. Both teams locked down into that and we're going to see Biceptual and Fast and Loose released from the penalty box at the same time to so that pack coming to full strength at the same time. Although I hear more whistles, we'll see where that lands. And that will free up Beauty Andy Beast for Lee Jammer. It's four in a row for Gotham. We're seeing that momentum switch. Benita Applebaum, though, sent to the penalty box for Gotham. So lots of penalties flying here and there. We do have some skaters in what I'll call the yellow zone because that's what shows up on our screen when they're getting into the four or five penalties. But this jam, jam eight, now slowing, 35 seconds left. No points scored yet, and as I say that, Beauty and the Beast picking up four points. It's only the second jam for Beauty and the Beast. We saw her a lot more yesterday, but today Kate Sarah Sarah just wasn't having the kind of trouble she had yesterday, so didn't leave a lot of time for Beauty and the Beast, but she's definitely putting up points now. And the blocking work continues now. Derby happening in the other direction as the uh, both jammers are drawn back. Four unanswered points for Gotham in that jam. 78 
270. It's going to be f four jams in a row where Gotham has scored. And there we see the moment where Beauty and E Beast, ooh, getting by, no problem. Check out adamskates.com for the latest in derby gear. So Kate Sarasara, we're just talking about how today's performance on the track has been a different story. A curly burly with the star, also sent to the penalty box in the straightaway with a cut track. Kate Sarasara picking up lead jammer status and only 10 seconds into the jam at that. Now Kate Sarasara coming to collect points in to turn one. Oh, falls back behind. Gets by with the toe stops, no problem. Lorage thought she had taken Kate to the line, but not quite. Fast and loose now, back on the track for Gotham. So full strength for blockers. Curly Burley released from the penalty box. Right there into turn one, and then right into the sad place of that Gotham three wall. Kate is three out of four leads in period one, and was two of six in period... I mean, three out of four in period two and was three out of, two out of six in period one, having a better second half, just like yesterday. Mm -hmm. We talked about perhaps getting that little mental reset in the locker room at half. That could be the case here. Jam nine showing uh, a very different style, although right now Kate having a bit of, oh, I thought, right as I was going to say that, I thought she was going to land that apex, but not quite and getting dragged back by Danny Darko. Yeah, and we talk about jammers getting a reset in the locker room, but I think also it gives time, that was a beautiful apex yes, jump. there I it think is. It also gives time for the jammers to tell the blockers what they need more yes. than you can in the chaos of the bench, right? Blockers are coming and going, and you sometimes don't get to sit down and say, hey, what I need you to do is make me space here, or what I want to have happen is this. So when you're all, everyone's in the locker room together, it's not only the, the jammer doesn't suddenly magically get better, but they're able to <laughs> strengthen that connection, right? Yes. With their team and their blocking court, and there's that beautiful Apex jump yeah, again. Notice the <sighs> speed change that happened right as the uh, apex jump attack was uh, was hap was about to happen. Rather, we're headed into jam number 10. 13 minutes 46 seconds left on the game clock. The Smacktivist with the star for Gotham. Anna Paviova for Victoria. And right now the pack maybe moved mm, a foot or well. Maybe a bit more than that, but still in the thick of the straightaway into turn one. Haven't cleared the pivot line yet. Yeah, VRDL's wall up at the front of the pack. A little bit of offensive help sent there by Kelly Walker. Is it going to be enough? Not quite. Gotham shutting the door on the inside line, but Smacktiv is still not finding any room either. The outside lanes appear to be wide open, but when you're stuck in that sad place, not quite. And then incredible zone work here, actually, by all of those blockers knowing yeah. exactly when to step in and, and provide that coverage. Yeah, VRDL does a wonderful job of just expanding and contracting their brace mm -hmm. wall to cover the zones, whereas Gotham can kind of send a blocker to bring the jammer back to where their wall is. There's different defense happening here, but it's wow. all happening at the same time, and it's all so difficult to get through, but Anna Paviova has, and this is the matchup that VRDL has been liking. The Smacktivist doesn't win as often against Anna Paviova as they do against other jammers. <laughs> and the Smacktivist laying a bit of a smack down there, deciding I'm going to play some D if I'm not going to be able to get through. And oh my gosh, let's go all the way back. What is even happening at this point? Wow. This is the first lead for VRDL in six. And the Smacktivist was able to basically kill it for Victoria. We'll mm. see if any points at all. And no, it's going to be a 0 0 jam. 87 to 70, it stays. So it was a huge win for Gotham and the Smacktivist on that because they were able basically to, to neutralize that lead that yep. Ariel was able to get. And there we see that superb one on one last minute blocking until the fall over there. That's caffeine for Gotham coming in to provide that. We have Spinach on the line for VRDL. Space Invader out for Gotham. And we have lead assessed to Spinach. It's two in a row 
for Victoria. That last jam was only the second scoreless jam of the game. So while this is a grinder, it is a grinder with score. And Space Invader is now out of the pack on her initial. Back in to turn two. Space already through, picks up four points. Not sure VR, VRDL even saw that that was happening there. Spinach being asked to call it. <laughs> but Space picks up two more points. Oh, I think those two, yeah, oh, those sorry, two went to Victoria. Rather, yeah, so yeah. it's four for Gotham, two for Victoria. 91 to 72 now with 10 and a half left. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, the S1 Lifer Visor Helmet, next level protection. Check out that S1 Visor, Lifer Visor Helmet. That was the first time that Space Invader had put up points since Jam 3. Tonight, Space Invader wow. just not having the luck that she had last night, but that last that Jam was exactly what Dragotham needed right there. Luck or preparation, perhaps, because VRDL likely knowing exactly how they're going to counter Space's ability to create any path. So it's been an interesting defensive uh, success for VRDL. Kate Sarah Sarah with the star for Gotham. Sarah Love out for VRDL. Going into a once again stretched out pack. Braced walls on either end here between turns one and two. Kate Sarah Sarah has eight leads out of ten in the game and has 32 points up on the board so far. Second most for Gotham. We're at and Sarah Love just trying to work around Yeti or not, here I come, and a two wall of uh, another skater there and out with lead, Sarah Love for VRDL. That's three Already leads in a row for mm -hmm. Victoria. Already coming back to score some points while Kate Sarasara is getting caught up there on that VRDL four wall. We have a multiplayer penalty assessed to Yeti or not, here I come. So there's only two blockers out there for Gotham, but still Sarah Love unable to make it an easy getaway. Kate Sarasara trying to jump over in that initial, but Biceptual and Lorage trying really hard there. My goodness, three blockers out there for VRDL, only two for Gotham as Benita Applebaum jo rejoins her line. Oh, and skaters slipping. Where does this jam end? We two do points <laughs> on the differential for Victoria. Four total for them, two for Gotham, 76 to 93. We're going into a Victoria timeout. It's the second they've used. A uh, good time to talk a little bit about penalties so far. Oh, first let's talk about this replay. Yeah, and that look of, <laughs> I made it out. I made it out of that pack. Yeah, so uh, we'll talk quickly about penalties. We've got six on the board for Victoria's LaRage, and then five for Danny Darko. No one else really in trouble unless you're looking at Lauren Foote with four. When you're talking about Gotham, you've got six on Fast and Loose, and then five apiece on Violet Knockout, Roxy Dallas, and Benita Applebaum. Any of those three foul out, any of those four foul out, and you have a bit of tr trouble, I would say that Gotham would be in. So this penalty game starts to become a factor now in the back half of the second half of the game. It's still such a close score and there's plenty of clock stoppages left, especially for Gotham, all three timeouts and an official review. Yeah, whereas Victoria is only retaining one timeout and one official review so far, or yes. thus far, so uh -huh. <laughs> thus far, not so far, thus far. On the game clock, eight minutes, 15 seconds, we're going to be heading into jam 13. That also can tell you a bit of how long a grind these jams have been. Have you tried the Adam Savant wheels? See what you've been missing. That's Adam Savant. On Gotham, though, let's take a quick peek at the penalties. Gotham number 1-7, that's fast and loose at six penalties. And then five apiece for Violet Knockout, Roxy Dallas, and Benita Applebaum. So they will be needing to uh, look yeah, at that. We just went into a Gotham timeout now, speaking of clock stoppages. Oh, there you go. So we're rolling one timeout to the other. And uh, that also gives us time to look at the VRDL ones. Five apiece for Biceptual, 
Lorage, and Danny Darko. So interesting stats there when it comes to very, very strong blockers all having lots of penalties in a very fast and demanding game. Anna Paviova for, with the star for VRDL, the Smacktivist. This is a very common matchup now. The yeah. Smacktivist with the star for Gotham. Two leads apiece now in this matchup, so they're, they're evenly matched. Very evenly matched. So it will come down to those blockers. VRDL with a full four wall, although uh, it does appear that um, Kelly Walker is trying to go their offense, effectively neutralizing any offensive help. Some activist getting knocked to the outside, drawn all the way back into the straightaway, right to the jam line, actually, for Anna Paviova. And there, uh, lead has been assessed to the Smacktivist. Coming in to that VRDL wall. Oh, the sad place, Tober. I know. That is, that is what you've... Uh, I didn't, th I didn't no, coin you didn't, that. Maybe you didn't coin didn't it, but that. you, you I just popularized said it, yes. it. So there you go. Well, no, I think it's been popular for a long time, <laughs> but I've never, I've never been there, as I don't jam. But I... I I wish it were the bad place because it catches that, that that I just think about mm -hmm. the bad, the good place, good place, the bad place, the sad place. Yeah. <laughs> Although the Smacktivist not really letting it phase them, but my goodness, a grind out pushing all the way from the jammer line through past the pivot line. Of course, the Smacktivist has lead. Gotham, of course, being the beneficiary of these long jams, right? The it's to their advantage to keep it to keep it running long. You have a 23 point lead. You're not losing points. It doesn't really matter if you lose time. Yet the second that Anna Paviova is in scoring position, Smacktivist calls that one off. It's pretty smart. 0-0 zero, zero jam, third scoreless jam of the game so far. And uh, 93 to 76, we have six minutes-ish left in, in this game. And here we have a look at that defense. Violet knockout. Oh, and Daryl coming up to Ah, uh, not quite able to stay in bounds there, and that's that is a and, dangerous mm -hmm. place if, yes. for for blockers because you have so much space as a jammer, and you could do a straight line out, and that's a beautiful place for a jammer to break free. If I were if I were blocking, that would be where I would have the you know you want to put your most focus in holding those jammers. Yes, and we start jam fourteen. Kate Sarah 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 Love. The jammer matchups here for Gotham and VRDL, respectively. Once again, it's just one big pack of jammers. Those walls interconnecting with one another, making offense right now a little bit more difficult. But my goodness, Sarah Love able to find there the outside again. lane. Yep, that's that spot right there. And the wider, and look at that, Kate Sarasara able to take advantage of that same position on the track. Sarah Love being told to keep running it, but decides to call it instead as Kate Sarasara approaches to score some points. It is once again a scoreless jam, and VRDL can't really afford to run the clock here because it is just winding down. We're under five left in the semifinal. Another look here. Here in the replay, yeah, we're going to talk about Again, what I'm talking about, mm. see, it's difficult for when you're in a tight clump like that, when you've got those braced walls, it's, and the jammer can get around the outside there all the way out to the top of that apex. It's a lot more space, and especially it's a risk of you having a clockwise block as well if you skate the wrong way in that space. So it's just a beautiful place for a jammer to break free and a hard place to block. And there again in that turn two, this time going to spinach for VRDL, picking up lead jammer status as Space Invader. Now almost a full lap behind as spinach comes in to score some points into turn two. Space Invader already approaching to score as well and likely may steal some points. Well, that's not if Lorage has anything to say about that. Knocked to the inside, Space Invader now coming back into scoring position exactly the same as spinach. Spinach being told to continue to run it, but with space in essentially the exact same scoring position. Oh, and now through with four points for Gotham. Spinach has effectively neutralized that with another four points, so 
will the VRD, VRDL defense be able to keep space back enough? I, I, I don't understand the time management here, honestly. Like, you're 17 points back. There's three minutes, 20 seconds left in the game. You have a lead. I mean, okay, so now you've got four points on the differential, so we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I maybe I jumped the gun on this. Yeah, the VRDL defense uh, figuring out Space Invader once more in turn two. It's literally the furthest point from where the announcer table is, so we're looking through officials as well. But here we're just seeing a concert recycling, but there it was spinach this time coming to the inside, being dragged back. Space, inside, dragged back. And, well, and remember that Space Invader has points we can't see, right? There's, yes. there's points in this. She's been recycled a number of times. I would be shocked if she doesn't have all four. And, and then Spinach is only one pass up ahead. Maybe has three more. No, four and four. So you burn two minutes off the clock. You got four points on the differential. Score is 101 to 88. I, you, you had four points on the differential a minute and a half ago. All right. Here's another understand. look at that. Whoa. That moment there by Spinach, and that's Violet Knockout feeling the uh, repercussions of that hit. I could see making that gamble on the second pass, but mm. once you once you get out on the second pass and it's 8-4, you'd think that you would call oh, it. Oh, wow. Gotham, the Smacktivist, doing exactly what they did the last time by uh, dragging back the jammer. I mean, what an effective way to kill time. Yeah, almost it's, 10 seconds. Yeah. Right there as a, in such a close game. And oh, the crowd is loving this intense play in turn two as Sarah Love is the jammer at the forefront, able to get by, picks up lead jammer status. And this is has to be the moment for VRDL if you're going to start making up those points. We have a minute 31 left on the game clock, a minute 20 left in this jam. VRDL right now is on a 6-1, six, 6-1 six lead run in this second half. The smack or in this last six games. drawn back there while they are in turn two. Sarah Love gets through four points. And the smack is now a half lap behind out on their initial. The pack starting to speed up. The pack also advantage to Gotham at this point. Only two VRDL blockers out on the line. Yet you're not here. I come now rejoining the Gotham line. But look at this biceptual working alongside Bianca Sharetta. Oh my goodness. I don't understand the time management here either. You have two clock stoppages. There's only 40 seconds left. You could have another minute and a half if you would have called it last time. Now you're just losing the points you're gaining on the differential. I just, I'm not quite sure what VRDL's plan here is. Oh, well, there's your timeout, uh, Tober. I mean, but you, we have 26 seconds left on the clock. You could have another minute and 20. No, minute and 50 seconds if you had called those two jams off and you would have seen the same Differential. They only got three points in this one and four points in the last one, and you would have gotten more than that if they would have called the if they would have called the jam right when the Smacktivist got out, and more than that if they would have called the other jam. And we haven't been seeing multi-scoring jams, and right now VRDL uh, an, ex an even ten points behind Gotham R Girls Roller Derby. Remember, this is the semifinal, the first semifinal of champs. So. Whoever wins this game is moving on to that final tomorrow, is playing for the Hydra, while the team who's defeated is playing for third place. Yeah, I mean, Gotham is playing a wonderful game this game. They're doing everything they need to do to stay where they are at this 10-point lead, and they've had, you know, the second half, they closed the gap, they picked the lead up, they, they were down nine, so they basically oh. gained 20 on the differential coming oh. into it. We do have another timeout. This one now is Gotham. to Gotham. Well, it appeared so. The jam timer was yes. signaling for that. Um, we do want to make note as well that on Gotham, number four, Violet Knockout has fouled out. Number one, seven, Fast and Loose is sitting at six penalties. Has been for a while. So in the last seven jams, VRDL has gotten lead six out of the seven, but they've only been able to score 25 to 12 in that run because of those two jams that they ran long. Whoa, sorry. Exactly Just looking equal. at the, the penalties to in total, 32 apiece, there's your jammer stats for the game. Wow, Kate Sarasara having a solid showing and a pave you over as well for VRDL. 
38 points on Smacktivist, 34 points on Kate Sarah Sarah, 31 on Spinach, and 30 on Anna Paviova. But those differentials on Victoria. So I see one jammer out there. Oh, look, Gotham's going to take their other timeout. Let's just. I mean, let's just. Why not? Do it. Why not? Take all the time. And the crowd right now is. It feels like that moment when uh, the jam timer calls five seconds where there's almost no breath. That's almost what it feels like in this entire venue right now. We went yeah. from a hyped up crowd to everyone really settling in, focusing in. Only 10 points. I can't stress enough <laughs> that that is. Oh my goodness. 10 points I, is what separates. It could, in Gotham. it could be a lot less, though, if they had managed time a little bit better in those last two games. I'm, I'm really caught up on it. Yes. I don't mean to be caught up on it, but I really <laughs> am a little caught up on it. Let us know if you're caught up on it at hashtag talk to WFTDA. Hey, shout out to Rydell Skates, proud sponsor of these 2019 WFTDA playoffs and champions. Thank you so much, Rydell, for all you do for us. And don't forget, you can check out Super Fit Hero Apparel, designed for roller derby, tough enough for any workout. Team orders and sponsorships available at superfithero.com. Okay, so for this final matchup, it's the matchup that started the bout. It's the matchup that came into the second half. It's Kate Sarah Sarah with the star for Gotham. Sarah Love out on the line for VRDL. I just want to point out that the Smacktivist has the pivot. So there is a uh. full plan here that Gotham has. Whether, like, if we get lead, this happens. If we don't get lead, this yes. happens. So we'll have to see how effective that VRDL defense is here. It is Sarah Love at the, at the front of the pack. The crowd is very excited as Gotham is able to, that's caffeine, to able to draw back Sarah Love all the way to the pivot line. I don't think anyone in this building is breathing right now. I'm not sure if any of you at home are breathing right now. This is the longest time, the longest seconds in turns one and two we've had all day. And if you're following along on the audio feed, the game clock is now at zero. We have a minute, two seconds left in the jam. Lead has not been assessed. We have a multiplayer block uh, penalty assessed to, oh, the Smacktivist, there's the, the pivot for Gotham being sent to the penalty box. Sarah Love now coming up against one more blocker is assessed lead for VRDL. Has 42 seconds now to make up 10 points or more for Victoria Roller Derby. And she's got That's four, four now, 30 seconds left. I bet you, I bet you uh, VRDL really misses the jammer lap point right about now. Yeah, 25 seconds left, only coming into scoring position. Kate Sarah Sarah released from the penalty box. Sarah Love gets by, not quite, unable to escape the pack here into turn three. Kate Sarah Sarah now in scoring position. The jam clock is winding down. Kate Sarah Sarah bumped to the inside. Where does that leave us? It is a very, very, it looks like a five-point game. 109 Gotham, 103 Victoria is our unofficial final. We're going to wait for the count. Very, very close game. I Sarah Love, the jammer for VRDL on the track, has just given it her all, her absolute all in this game. And remember, this is the first time these two teams have been on the same side of the bracket since 2015, where one knocks out the other. VRDL skaters feeling the emotion, letting it, letting it go right now on the side of the track while Gotham celebrates. That's the final whistle there. It is a Gotham win, sending them into the final of the 2019 champs. 109 to 103, Gotham Roller Derby will be our first finalist. And remember, this is Sarah, this is Sarah Love's last champs, maybe. So one of the last and look at that effort by Sarah Love getting by. That is the um, moment of lead and just took a minute and 15 seconds for that moment to happen. If she had just had maybe another 30 or 40 seconds. The testament to the blocking strength of both of these teams to have a fairly low scoring semifinal only separated by six points. And honestly, 
You know, you can go back and litigate any moment of this game, but the time management in the last five minutes just could have made or could have made or could have yes. made this game what it is. Yes, I'm losing. I can't even make words do the things I want them to do. Final penalty counts, 32 to 33. Gotham wanting one more. Then Victoria also had a foul out. But look, for those who uh, can't, can't have a look at what's happening here live in Montreal, right now the entire crowd on their feet applauding this game they just witnessed. A tight, tight finish. Of course, Victoria having the lead at the half. Gotham coming in. Yeah, but you know, we said coming into the half, that lead, that, it was just so close. They just really, truly could have been at anybody's game. These two teams are incredibly well matched for each other. They've played three times this year. Gotham's won two of those, but none of them, I mean, other than the thin air throwdown where Victoria kind of really got the hang of it and was able to put up a 70 point difference. They've always played within 25 points of each other recently, and it's just. It's the moment you come to champs for. It is right here. A special electric moment right now. And here we see VRDL taking their lap underneath the human tunnel of all the VIP holders. They have a track access coming to show support for their teams. It has just been. I feel like this game has been a day in and of itself. And you know what a story what a roller coaster for Gotham. They lose Misty Maven right before the right before the postseason. They're able to reconfigure their jammer pool. They do a fantastic job of it. And then they come here and put up two big wins and they're headed to the final. Hydra's in sight for them. And it's been a while since they've held it. They miss it. Yes, and you know, uh, now they got to get ready and then take a look at the next bout that's coming up. That's coming up at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So basically, just don't go anywhere because it's yeah. coming up right after this. It's Arch Rival against Rose City. You've been listening to myself, Death Nella, joined by October Revolution, our fantastic producer, Kate Silver. We will be heading down trackside in just a moment where you'll get to hear from one of the Gotham skaters on that, as you said, Dober, roller coaster of a game. Yeah, and you know, this has been a roller coaster, a beautiful, wonderful day, and I hope that you were able to check out the Derby Without Borders. Uh, we are Nations Bout this morning, and make sure you go check out derbywithoutborders.org to see how you can help support the growth of roller derby around the world and learn more about the magical things that have been going on in that community. And uh, yeah, exactly. Now, VRDL, I should also mention, will have one more game. Uh, that will be played tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's before the bronze and then the gold medal bouts. Thank you once again for joining us here at the 2019 WFTDA International Championships. We are now going to go trackside to hear from Gotham. Hey, Sissy Splacek here with Yeti Hi. from the Gotham Roller Derby. Hi, thanks so much for having me. That was such an amazing game. It was a grind of a game. Oh my god, I know. That was insane. I've never been more stoked for six points, man. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was such a hard fought game and it was like getting to half and there were only a few jams on the board. Yeah, for real. Uh, I'm just so grateful that our leadership and our coaches and our management and our captains and everyone on the team really dug deep. And the past seven weeks, we've literally done nothing but prep for this game. So I'm super stoked that it came to fruition in our favor. So, yeah. I think a lot of times we hear about the jammers. Sometimes we hear about pivots taking passes. We don't get to hear a lot about the blockers and the pivots who are out there just anticipating mm -hmm. and being the glue and being like, you were all over the track. You were always doing such cool offense and like such smart anticipation. How did you train for that? Or how does it feel? Well, it's not one person. We're such a hive mind that I just fulfill the role of trying to bring the other three people on my line together and we wouldn't be successful without each other. And I can't take credit for anything. I'm just a cog in the works, man, and that's totally fine with me. Yeah. So it was still it was so cool to watch though, and get to see you like doing that stuff and picking those plays out ahead of time, Thank like you. Uh, before other people were seeing them, which is awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> the floor is stellar, so the floor is definitely helping that a lot. Thank you, everyone who put it together. 
So it's been a few years. Obviously, Gotham's no stranger to this first place game, no stranger to champs. But it's been a few years since 2016 that y'all were in this first place game. Yeah. What are you going to do ahead for that game tomorrow? Well, I think we're just going to revel in the accomplishment that we just did. And honestly, I think whatever happens tomorrow, the growth we've had this season is incredible. The challenges we've overcome, incredible. It's such a privilege to be on this team. Like I, I mentioned, I think, on my Instagram, I was like, if you told me a year ago I'd be skating with Gotham at Champs, I would have offered you a generous shot of tequila <laughs> and said thanks so much. So uh, it's so great to live your dream, I guess. It is a dream, and it's been so cool to watch. So you're going to play the winner of this game, either Arch or Rose. Rose has been there before. Arch hasn't. Right. Do you have someone you want to play? Do you have something you want to see out of that game? I think we really rebel the higher level teams when we play them. It's such a learning experience for us, and getting to go head to head with them, regardless of who it is, will be wonderful. Uh, if Rose takes this game, it'll be <laughs> great to have that 2016 rematch. But if Arch takes this game, good on them, and we're prepped for that too. So, oh gosh, I'm so stoked right now. I'm trying not to pee my pants. <laughs> No, that's real. That's excitement. Yeah, for real. All right. Congratulations again. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you. Thank it was you. such a joy to watch you, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Can I give a shout out to my old league that, like, all sat together there and cheered, and I'm just so grateful for where I've come from and where I am now. So thanks, y'all, and thanks for letting me say that. <laughs> all right. Stay tuned for the last game of the night here, Arch versus Rose on WFTDA.TV. Bye.